feel sorry for David. He has to learn a big poem to recite in assembly Friday, if. Uh, uh, if what? If, that's it. You mean he has to learn a whole big poem and, and they may not even call on the boy? If you'll stop reading the magazine a minute, I'll explain it. The poem is Rudyard Kipling's If. Oh, good for him. What's so fascinating in that magazine? Oh, no wonder. Beautiful, isn't it? A solid silver with beauty that lives forever is international sterling. <laughs> Sterling. From Hollywood, International Silver Company, creators of International Sterling, presents The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. As we look in at the Nelsons at 1847 Rogers Road, 12-year-old David Nelson has the floor. And a good job he's doing, too. Ozzy, Harriet, and Ricky are seated around the living room while David... Well, listen for yourself. And so hold on where there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings nor lose the common touch... Excuse me. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much... Excuse me. Make him stop, Mom. I can't help it. Go on, David. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. That was well, fine. Very good, David. Guys, you have to do all that to be a man? We notice he stops hiccuping now I'm through reciting. Oh, yeah? <laughs> if you can't stop that, Ricky, go get a glass of water. Oh, that was perfect, David. Not one mistake. I don't know what you're worried about. Well, golly, Mom, it's going to be a little different reciting it in front of the whole school, you know. Oh, forget about it, David. You'll be perfect. Sure, it's easy for you to say, Pop. You don't have to do it. Well, I get scared just thinking about it. You get scared? What about me? What are you afraid of? When David forgets his lines, all the kids are going to look at me and laugh. <laughs> You're a fine one to talk about forgetting lines. What about you and the Thanksgiving play? Oh, yeah? I never even heard about that. What was that? A little dinky Thanksgiving play they had in the third grade. The Courtship of Miles Standish. Well, okay, so I forgot my lines. Well, maybe his part was too difficult. Oh, yeah, very difficult. How could anybody possibly forget gobble, gobble? <laughs> well, let's not start a big argument about it. I'm sure you'll recite it perfectly. Of course he will. Well, I sure hope so. If I can only keep my knees from shaking. Well, it's just a question of a mental attitude. All you have to do is give yourself a little pep talk. I know it, Pop. I tell myself there's nothing to be scared of. I tell myself I'm being silly. But well, my knees won't pay any attention. They go right on shaking. <laughs> You've just got to develop enough self-confidence to overcome your nervousness. When I was about your age, I gave the Gettysburg Address at school on Lincoln's birthday. And you weren't scared? Oh, yes, I, I was a little nervous. But fortunately, I'd rehearsed and rehearsed until I knew the thing backwards. My confidence overcame my nervousness. So when I stepped out on the stage, I was calm and cool. And recited it backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Only the first few lines. Score four and Yevon skiers the goal. <laughs> but I went through the rest of it perfectly. The main thing is just to keep your mind clear. Take the lines from your poem. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, see, there's a lot that can help you right there in the poem. I can appreciate how David feels, though. In fact, I get a little jittery myself every time I have to take charge of the CTA meeting. Oh, you do not. Of course I do. Oh, which reminds me, we still have to get a man to drive a school bus. 
Well, what's the matter with the regular driver, Sam Dawson or whatever his name is? Well, it seems he has to go into the hospital for a couple of days. Well, you won't have any trouble getting somebody. I don't know. It's a pretty big bus. Well, why don't you volunteer, Pop? David, don't be silly. Well, what's silly about it? Well, it's just that you've never driven a bus, have you? Oh, sure. All one summer at camp when I was a counselor. It was a little smaller than a school bus, but it was a bus. Well, you never told me that. Oh, sure. It was an old black bus. I'd put the boys into the back and lock the door. It was great for hauling kids around in. We bought it from the police department. Wouldn't that be swell? Pop driving the school bus. Are you going to do it, Pop? Oh, come on, boys. Stop teasing Dad. Well, they're not teasing me. In fact, I'm thinking the thing over. Boy, that'd be neat. We could sit right behind you. The other kids would sure be jealous, especially Harvey Cushingham. Yeah. My pa would be a bus driver, and his pop just president of a bank. <laughs> well, it's up to your father if he wants to do it. Well, I might as well, Harriet. Somebody's got to do it. Besides, it might be fun. Is there a uniform goes with the job? Oh, yes, a lovely uniform, a blue cap. <laughs> a blue cap? Sam always looks like the captain of a ship. Well, that's the way it should be. After all, the bus driver's at the helm. He has the full responsibility for the passengers. Their welfare and their safety. That's what Papa looks like. Just like a sea captain. His hands on the wheel, his pipe clenched between his teeth. Yeah, this is going to be fun, Harriet. Guiding my ship through treacherous straits. David, back to studying your poem. Aye, aye, Captain. Ricky, you check him for mistakes. Aye, aye, Captain. Harriet. Uh, let's see. I hate to interrupt like this, Captain, but you did promise to help me with the dishes. Hand me a towel, Admiral. <laughs> what in the world is that? Oh, hi, Thorny. Somebody give you a hot foot or something? Don't be silly. This happens to be a little seafaring dance you landlubbers wouldn't understand. It's called the Sailor's Hornpipe. You could have yeah. fooled me. Oh, Oz, before I forget it, in case... What in the world? Was something the matter? I never noticed you had a tattoo mark before. Is that an anchor on your wrist there? Oh, that, no, 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 no. I was just doodling a little with my fountain pen. It's just ink. Uh, what were you going to say just now? Oh, that. I just thought I'd warn you. If Harriet should happen to pay you some unexpected compliments about your driving, don't give her a tumble. Oh, what do you mean? Well, do you know Sam Dawson, the guy who drives the school bus? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, since he's in the hospital, and the ladies of the PTA have promised to trick some unsuspecting husband into taking his place until he gets back. Oh, I, I should think that might be fun for a few days. Fun? Are you kidding us? Poor Joe Randolph tried it last year, and he hasn't been the same since. <laughs> well, I didn't hear about that. What was the trouble? The poor guy wound up a nervous wreck. In the first place, the bus is harder to drive than a bucking Bronco. Oh, I think I can... That I, that whoever uh, uh, it can be handled. I... Now, wait, Oz, that's not all. They pile about 50 kids in at once. Big kids, little kids, fat kids, skinny kids. All sizes and descriptions. And they all start yelling and they never stop. Well, I know, Thorny, but kids will be kids. Oh, sure, they don't do anything serious. Just wrestle in the aisles, throw books at each other. <laughs> Blow the horn, pull the driver's hat down over his eyes. No, it's a blue cap. They did that to Joe Randolph? That was only part of it. They finally tied his shoelace to the emergency brake <laughs> and put a bumblebee in his shirt tail. <laughs> he abandoned the bus in front of Merrill's drugstore and ran down an alley. Ran? Oh, you see, ran down an alley. Now, that's Joe Randolph for you. You see, always falls to pieces in a pinch. Remember the bowling tournament when he was last man up? We only needed a couple of points to win, and he rolled the ball into the gutter both times. You see, that's all right when a guy just folds up when the pressure's on. I, I wonder why Sam is going to the hospital. Oh, it's nothing serious. One of the little girls on the bus hit him in the head with a snowball. <laughs> they think it fractured his skull. <laughs> Yes, dear? I, I just got to thinking. <laughs> I'll bet you thought I was serious when we were talking about driving the school bus. Why, yes, weren't you? Oh, in a, in a joking, hysterical sort of a way. Well, I hope you were serious about it, dear. I've already called Mr. Newton and told him about it. Who's Mr. Newton? Well, he's the man in charge of school transportation. He'll be here any minute. 
Well, gee, I, I didn't know you were going to rush into it this way. Well, dear, the new driver has to start tomorrow. Of course, if you want to get out of it, I can... Well, talk... it, it's not that, Harry. It, if you've already promised, I'll, I'll go through with it. Mr. Newton was delighted to hear that you'd volunteered. You know, it's not easy to find someone who's intelligent and dependable, he said. Well, <laughs> I, I know you, you can't just go pick up anybody. Uh, 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 I'll get it. Are you, uh, Mr. Nelson? Oh, oh, yeah, yes, I presume you're Mr. Newton. That's correct. Mrs. Nelson tells me you volunteered to drive our school bus for two days, or to state it more exactly, tomorrow and the day following. Uh, yes. Uh, won't you come in? Oh, uh, the... <laughs> oh, how do you do, Mrs. Nelson? Hello, Mr. Newton. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. <laughs> May I say, first of all, that we appreciate the offer of your services, Mr. Nelson. You feel capable of driving the bus, do you? Oh, I, I think so. I, I've been driving for, for 20 years or more. Buses? Uh, no, just passenger cars. Oh, well, there's considerable difference. Oh, I, I know, but, but in, in many ways, they're, they're very much the same. Mm, possibly. Uh, since you'll be starting with a school bus tomorrow, it'll be necessary for you to take the test this afternoon. Uh, test? Yes, the driving test for the special operator's license, which the school board requires. Oh, is it uh, very difficult? No, I don't think so. Not for a man of your intelligence. <laughs> I uh, brought some pamphlets and copies of the vehicle code, which you might like to go over. Also, the operation instructions for the bus. I think you'll find them rather interesting from a technical standpoint. You're familiar with the internal combustion engine, aren't you? Oh, d d d no, I wouldn't say I was familiar with oh, it. Oh, but you have had some experience with the operation of hydraulic units in public conveyances? Well, not very much. Oh. No. Uh, have you ever ridden in a school bus? Uh, no, I haven't. Did you go to school? <laughs> oh, uh, yes. Oh, yes. good, good. <clears throat> Well, I'll make arrangements for your driving test at three. The bus will be at the municipal garage. Well, it's been awfully good of you to volunteer like this, Mr. Nelson, and we really do appreciate it. <laughs> well, uh, good day, Mr. Nelson. Good day, Mrs. Good Nelson. Day. Goodbye, Mr. Newton. And thanks just loads. You're an absolute peach. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes, Harry. Look at the stack of books he left. And his driving test. I thought I was just going to get in the bus and gather up the kids. Well, how difficult can a driving test be? Well, I don't know. Hi, Pop. Hi, Pop. Uh, hello, boys. Is it all set? Are you going to drive the bus? Oh, I, I don't know, fellas. You see, there's a very difficult Hi, driving test. you can pass it, Pop. Sure, there's nothing to it, Pop. Well, that's easy to say if you don't have to do it. You'll get through it, Pop. You're just kidding us. You do your best when the going is tough. Just remember Rudyard Kipling. If you can trust yourself when all men die... Yeah, yes, yes, David, I've heard the You'll poem. do great, Pop. Oh, Come on, Rick. Hey, what is your name? Rudyard Kipling. Are you listening? Yes. Is this Rudyard Kipling? Yeah. I hate you. <laughs> Some people think before they speak, and some people don't. Ozzy's the impulsive type. But gosh, aren't we all? How many times have you made up your mind to buy something, for instance, and then changed it when you thought about the cost? That's apt to happen pretty often with today's prices the way they are. But let me tell you something. If it's international sterling you want to buy, you're in for a big surprise. A wonderful and amazing surprise. For the prices of international sterling have not gone up. Not one penny. It's true that other leading silver people have raised their prices, but you can buy your favorite international sterling pattern for the same price as in 1944. Why, on many of the lovely international sterling patterns, you can save as much as $20, enough to buy eight additional teaspoons. Yes, wonderful and amazing is right, for international sterling is the loveliest solid silver in the world. Artist designed as richly beautiful, as carefully finished as a rare gem. See it at your international sterling dealers tomorrow. Make yourself the justly proud owner of the solid silver with beauty that lives forever. Famous international sterling. 
Can Ozzie Nelson successfully master the art of driving a school bus and pass the required test? That is the question. Well, this should be a cinch for Ozzie, because he's been familiar with cars ever since childhood. He got his first automobile when he was just five. It was Christmas morning. His mother said, Oh, Ozzie, look what Santa Claus brought you. Wool underwear, a jack-in-the-box, some peppermint sticks, and a nice shiny automobile. And little five-year-old Ozzie, his eyes popping, replied, Oh, boy, wool underwear. Since that time, Ozzie has had much experience with motors. Surely a man who's been driving for such a long time will encounter no difficulty passing a simple driving test. But Ozzie isn't taking any chances. Look at him there, studying like mad. A left turn must be made from the extreme left side of the center lane. Well, I know that. You're doing fine, dear. Well, any dope knows the proper way to make a left turn. I can never forget that anyway, because I got a ticket for doing it wrong a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Say, why don't you let me read some questions and see if you can answer them? Okay. Um, what is the signal for a left turn? Arm straight out. Right turn. The arm up. Stop. Arm down. Uh, does it say what the signal is when you don't know what you want to do? No. Well, I've worked one out for that. When I don't know what I'm going to do, I raise up in the seat where the guy in back can see me and shrug my shoulders. <laughs> so, another question. Um, what does the blinking, blinking light mean? A loose bulb. <laughs> I'm trying to help. All right, give me the next question. When you hear a siren, you should pull over and stop. True or false? Well, of course, that's true. That's easy. Is it legal to park within ten feet of a fire plug? Well, certainly not. Easy question. All right, here's another one. If a streetcar approaches an intersection on Sunday afternoon, and there's a fire station on one corner and a police station on the other... And if a man on a motorcycle is approaching from the opposite direction, this picture. and on one side a truck is coming loaded with turnips, and on the other side a blimp is coming in for a landing, which one has a right away? Was that turnips you said? I would say the load of... No. What a question. What's the answer? I don't know. I just made it up. <laughs> oh, you know all the answers, dear. I'm sure you won't have a bit of trouble. Oh, no, I, I don't think I will, but you can see how a person who gets nervous in a pinch might be inclined to get a little jittery, you oh, see. Hi, Pa. Hi, Pa. Uh, when are you going to take the test? Oh, this afternoon. And I wish you wouldn't get so excited about it. It's just a routine driving test. I can hardly wait till tomorrow morning, boy. I don't see why you're making such a big thing of this as just driving a bus. Sure. And Will Thornberry's going around betting everybody you won't even pass the test. Will Thornberry is? Yeah, I bet him, boy. Oh, thank you, Ricky. Glad to see you have that much confidence in your old dad. What did you bet him? David's bicycle. <laughs> Oh, hi, Emmy Lou. I just heard what you're going to do, Mr. Nelson, and I think it's out of this world. Everybody's talking about it. You're going to make a gorgeous bus driver. Oh, is it just a blue cap? When you start, Mr. Nelson, I want to be at the ceremony. I want to hear your speech. I want to see the crowds, everybody cheering, singing, no. and dancing in the street. Oh, the air is filled with a deluge of confetti. No. The bands are playing. Flash buses are popping up all around you. What a day for Roger No, no, Jones. no, no, Emmy Lou, it's nothing like that. I'm just going to drive the school bus. That's no all. No ceremony? Won't they even break a bottle of champagne over the bus? <laughs> One of the children might spill a thermos of milk on me. It's going to be a very simple procedure. I, I take the test this afternoon. Test? I hate tests. They frighten me. I took a test in biology yesterday. I was so nervous. I was so tense. I had the feeling somebody was watching me all the time. 
What were you doing? Examining a frog's eye. <laughs> Just a routine bus driving test. Well, maybe so, but I bet they tried to trick you. They tried to trick me. They asked me how many teeth a frog has. I said six. Well, frogs don't have any teeth, Emmy Lou. I know. It was a trick question. Fortunately, I didn't miss it. Well, you told them that the frog had six teeth. Yes, but luckily my frog was a freak. <laughs> <laughs> they tricked you. Well, I, I'm sure this test won't be so difficult. Well, suppose they ask you something and you clam up. Clam up? Sure, that happens to a lot of people when they get nervous. You know something perfectly well, and at a very important moment, somebody suddenly asks you and you can't think of the answer. It might even be your own name. Well, I certainly know my own name. I'm Ozzie Nelson. You're walking home late at night. I'm Ozzie Nelson. It's dark. I'm Ozzie Nelson. It's dark and lonely. Ozzie Nelson. Suddenly a police car pulls up at the curb. A light is flashed in your face. A harsh voice barks. What's your name? Ozzie Frogsty. <laughs> Emmy Lou, don't be silly. I'm not going to get nervous, and I'm not going to forget the answer. Well, I hope not, Mr. Nelson, but be careful. You'll be driving along. Suddenly, the examiner will throw a quick question at you. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> Emmy Lou, in that event, I shall be very calm, cautious. Casually answer, when making a left turn, hold out the right chicken. <laughs> Harriet. Yes, dear? Don't you think it's a little unfair of us to force David to recite that poem in school? I mean, if the boy wants to back out of it, why don't we let him back out of it? But he wants to do it, dear. You told him. I told him. Why do people have to listen to what I tell them? David doesn't want to do it. He doesn't have to do it. And another thing, why do I have to bother taking this darn bus driving test if I don't want to? Well, you don't have to, dear, if you don't want to. Well, I I, I didn't say I, I don't want to exactly, but... Well, by golly, if you don't want me to take it, Harriet, I'm not going to take it. I didn't say I didn't want you to take it. We've been married for 13 years now. We have two boys. David is 12. Ricky is 8. Yes, dear, I've met them. <laughs> Feel free to tell me anything that's on your mind, Harriet. If you don't want me to take the test, if you're afraid something will go wrong, I'll run up a pole, bump into a truck, injure myself seriously. Just say so and I won't go through with it. Just say so. Or or nod your head a little. <laughs> For goodness sake, dear, what are you so worried about? Come on, Pop, we'll be late. Well, where are you guys going? Mom said we could go downtown with you. Wouldn't you guys rather stay home and play? Oh, no, Pop. We want to see you drive the bus. Uh, Harry, now let's at least be fair about this. I've never driven a, uh, this type of bus before, and you can't just get into one of these things and drive it away. If I had a little time to practice, maybe... Oh, of course. We can arrange that. I'll phone Mr. Newton and tell him that we'll meet him at the municipal garage. You can drive the bus around a while before you go down for your test. Oh, that would be wonderful. Uh, Harriet? Yes, dear? Tell him to put plenty of gas in it. Hi, it's a pretty comfortable seat. This bus is quite a bit larger than I thought. Yes, it is nice and roomy, isn't it? I'm sure you'll be able to handle it. I'm going to sit behind Pa. I'm going to sit behind Pa. I think you'd better let Mr. Knudsen sit behind Daddy. He may want to talk to him. Yes, quite possible. Everybody aboard? Turn her up, Pop. Let's see. Press the starter. Hey, that's really a quiet motor. It should be. That's the one that runs the electric heater. <laughs> the starter is that big button right over there. It, it, that, uh, that, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, hold on, everybody. Here we go. The gear shift is quite simple. Now, low is down here, second is up there, third is down there, fourth is over here. Then you shift into high. Pull it back. Right, go ahead. All right. Pull it back. Lean to the left. Crouch to the right. Good for you, Pa. Ah, oh, very well done, Mr. Nelson. You must have had some experience. Well, I have had a little, yes. When Mrs. Nelson makes waffles, I always run the mix master. <laughs> You drive 
I've just as good as Sandra's, Pop. Well, it's just a matter of getting the hang of it. Any particular place you folks would like to go now? We've seen just about the whole town. I think you've caught on very well, Mr. Nelson. I suggest we swing down to the motor vehicle department and you can get your license. Oh, I I don't know. I'm still pretty rusty. Oh, you can pass the test easy, Pop. Sure you can. Besides, it's getting dark. Uh, why don't we put it back in the garage, and tomorrow morning, after I've had a good night's sleep... Tomorrow morning, this bus will be crawling with youngsters. Uh, now, turn left at the next corner, Mr. Nelson. The motor vehicle department is just down the street. Uh, just once more around the block. Once more around the block, and you'll be out of gas. <laughs> Just come inside the office, Mr. Nelson. Come on, dear. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs. If you can... I beg your pardon. There's no, nothing, nothing. Do you seem nervous about something? Oh, certainly not. If you can force your heart and nerve. Is this the place? Yes, through this door. After you, Harry. Thank you, dear. After you, Mr. Newton. Oh, thank you. David. Thanks, Pop. Ricky. Thanks, Pop. Why don't you come in, too, Mr. Nelson? <laughs> oh, God. Well, I'm ready, Mr. Newsom. I'll go through with this if it kills me. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs, bring on the examiner, Mr. Newsom. I'll take that test. What test, Mr. Nelson? The driving test? The driving test? You've already taken it. Oh, I'm so sorry, dear. I forgot to tell you. Mr. Newton is one of the examiners for the motor vehicle department. Well, the, the, I had a hunch you were. <laughs> <laughs> Something told me the moment I stepped into the bus that I was taking the test. Uh, uh, mental telepathy. Uh, <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. I thought you knew. Uh, let's see. Where are these things? Oh, oh yes, here we are. Now we just have to fill out this form. Let's see what you do. Uh, <laughs> Your full name. Uh, Ozzy Frog, Steve. Ozzy, 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 my name is Ozzie Nelson. My address is 1847 Rogers Road. Ozzie and Harriet will be back in just a moment. Gosh, wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody could realize how silly it is to get all worried and nervous about things? Sure doesn't help any. And it's almost always needless besides. Mm, I wish you'd been around to tell me that last week, Mr. Smith. Why? I gave my first dinner party, and you should have seen the stew I got into before that fatal hour. And all unnecessarily, too, I'll bet. <laughs> well, I, I felt a lot better somehow when I looked at my table. It was really beautiful, Mr. Smith, all shining and important looking, with my brand new international sterling. I had that lovely Joan of Arc pattern. Well, gosh, how can you lose when you have silver like that on the table? Joan of Arc is one of the most stunning patterns ever created by famous international sterling. A pattern of quiet elegance and classic beauty. Every line of it, from the gentle curves and contours to the delicate shell ornament on the top. Oh, I know I'm awfully proud to own it. You see, my mother had international sterling, too. And next to Daddy's engagement ring, it was, well, her most cherished possession. Just the way my set of Joan of Arc is now. And you'll cherish it all your lifetime, too. For international sterling is solid silver that grows warmer and lovelier every time you use it. It's no wonder international sterling has found a place in so many women's hearts. It's the loveliest solid silver in the world, you know. Solid silver with beauty that lives forever. Oh, and by the way, there's a wonderful story about Ozzy and Harriet with a beautiful color picture in the February issue of Red Book Magazine. Harry, here he comes. David must be next. Now, don't get nervous, dear. Ozzy, please, you're hurting my hand. Oh, I'm sorry. And now, 
David Nelson will recite the immortal Rudyard Kipling, If. David? If! <laughs> if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. Look at him, Harry. If you can trust Who is yourself the cucumber? when all men doubt you. That's my son up there. I do, please. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting. Look at him come or through in a pinch. About, don't be Just a chip off the old block. Or being hated, don't give way to hating. Tune in next week to another adventure of Ozzie and Harriet, starring Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. And remember, the solid silver with beauty that lives forever is international sterling. If you meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. This is Vern Smith speaking. This is... Hold it nice, people. This is Horace Height, waiting to bring you a group of talented new entertainers in just a minute. Stick around, won't you, on NBC the National Broadcasting Company.